internet. I'm here with Brenda from Canada. Hello, internet people, and hello, people from New Zealand. This is so awesome that we can do this. I just, I have been so looking forward to this so date with you, Future Cat. It's been fun. I've been just like, oh, what are we going to do? <laughs> what are we going to do? So, my question to you first: What are you doing today? Well, I have a plan because I had a nice cushion on my bed, and my cat has destroyed it. So, I'm going to make a new cushion, and I found years ago in a garage sale this denim fabric and i reckon i can make a nice cushion out of this with some applique on it so oh nice very nice I up as i go along as i always do but that's <laughs> my project today <laughs> so have you got like are you going to do flowers hearts you're not sure yet um yeah maybe flowers i'm thinking like sort of maybe some flowers and vines and leaves and things um Very haven't cool. quite decided if i'm going to do like raw edge or turned okay i haven't quite yeah. yeah i uh i i learned how to do needle turn applique and then after that i was just like oh gosh do i have to do applique and i did do a lot of applique but i was not i wasn't fond of it I do the sewing machine applique now, or I do the raw edge. Yeah. Or I sometimes I will do the turned applique where, you know, like you turn it with interfacing and then you sew yeah, it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Maybe do it that way. Yeah. Yeah, that way, that way is a little easier. But the way I learned how to do it, it was like you cut out your little thin cardboard templates and you stitch, stitch it in place, like you stitch it. Yeah. You thread based it so it stays. That oh, no, shape. I'm not doing that. Nothing, yeah, nothing like, but basting. I don't do basting. <laughs> yeah, it's like a lot of, there was a lot of work to that. There was my friend and I years ago, we did a, what was it, a tree of life? And then she said, oh, it's only like 4,000 leaves. It'll take us no, we can get it done in a weekend. <laughs> and I was like, okay, how does the pattern tell you to do it? And it was that, you know, the cardboard and the certain. Mm -hmm yeah four thousand leaves and she had i don't know how many leaves already cut out and i don't know how many more leaves had to be cut out it was just like yeah i we helped her cut out the leaves we helped get her going and we just like bye <laughs> four thousand leaves is <laughs> four thousand leaves later she finally did get it finished and she's like yes i call this i hate applique <laughs> I hate appliques so much. <laughs> Anything with 4,000 leaves, I'd be getting out the fabric paint and just drawing them. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was kind of like just, or do that. Uh, what's, what are they doing now? The Where they do the soda ash and they take like, uh, you've seen them where they take like the stencils, like where they just do printing. Yeah. You remember yeah. the potato printing we used to do yeah. as kids? Yeah. Yes. Well, they're doing that now on fabric. They get their nice hand dyed fabric because then they start, you know, putting in all these little divots or whatever that yeah. they're doing from st from a stamp kit, and then they're they're setting it. And it's like some mm. of that fabric is just gorgeous when it's all done. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, doing it that way would probably be a little, you know stamping on leaves. <laughs> there you go. Two thousand stamped leaves, easy. Yeah, yeah, two thousand stamp, not a problem. Yeah. Well, the only other thing would have been worse was if you had to embroider all those leaves on. <laughs> that would not, <laughs> that would, you know, with a blanket stitch or some kind of like leaf stitch, you know, that would have been worse. That That's the only thing I could think of that would have been worse than having to applique those leaves on. But yeah, yeah. So, but I did do applique quilt for both my daughters. So after that, my obligation on applique is done. <laughs> So what are oh. you planning on today? Uh, I have got a charity quilt challenge coming up in a, a group, big group that I host. And it's my turn. When we're filming this, this is February 25th of 2023. So in March, our March meeting, it's my turn to come up with the challenge. So my challenge is going to be orphan blocks. When mm -hmm. Because every time I do a video, guess what, guys? I'm making an orphan block. And now you got to figure out something to do with them, right? So <laughs> look at my ball behind me. That That is a bunch of orphan blocks that someone put on the giveaway table at my guild. 
And I thought, I'm going to take them and I'm going to see what I can do with them. So I'm halfway through designing a quilt made of totally of other people's orphan blocks. Yeah, and sometimes that's a it's a kind of an interesting challenge. It's a good brain, mm. you yes. know, get your brain going. And I had some of the nicest blocks donated to me by one of my Gill sisters. And it just like, wow. I couldn't believe that Lois gave me this bag of beautiful. Mm beautiful blocks and every you know I'm looking through them of course I couldn't hardly wait to get home because my husband doesn't want me rifling through quilt blocks while we're driving <laughs> and he's like you're not no you're not opening the bag now and so we drove we drove home and did a bunch of different errands so I got home and I started going through my wow I mean she's been quilting a very long time and her stuff is mm -hmm. precision like beautiful wow. right so yeah i i'm i'm excited to get going on that challenge so anyways the challenge is make quilts out of your orphan blocks but mm -hmm. make as many as you can because all of us in that group we have stacks and stacks and stacks of orphan blocks mm -hmm. and make as many charity quilts as you can because this is a time i think in our in our lives where we need to be charitable and be helpful mm -hmm. especially like what's going on here in Canada and in Alberta is that there's so many charities right now that need help. And yeah. because of our, because of the war in the Ukraine and all, you know, like all the other refugees that are coming into Canada and there, there's some issues that Canadians don't like to talk about, like homelessness or child poverty or all these other things, right? Like, you know, domestic violence. Canadians don't like talking about it, but it happens. So somebody's got to step up and, you know, say, hey, we know this is happening. And here, here's a quilt, you know, like here's something for you. So, I mean, this is what we're trying, I'm trying to do now in my life is that, you know, we're going to make quilts for kids that mm -hmm. are going through a really hard time, right? So we also have a chapter of the Sleep in Heavenly Peace here. So I'm hoping some of my quilts end up there too, because those are all going to kids. You so know, what does that do? I haven't heard of that one. Sleep in Heavenly Peace, make sure everybody, it, all children in your community have a bed to sleep in. Wow, yeah. And they actually build the beds and they go to corporations and they get mattresses and, um, you know bedding donated but you know putting being able to give them a quilt i mean mm. that quilt basically tells them that somebody's loving them you know yep. so that's that's you know just kind of really the you know the icing on the cake they just love yeah. the thing so and right. you know the last time i did a big donation there was a lot of a lot of uh those quilts that went all over the place mm. but let's talk about our challenge because last time we got together we challenged each other on our UFOs. Yes. Yeah, we did, didn't we? <laughs> yes. You know what? I am I'm right off the hop. I'm conceding you the win, future cat. I really am. Because if you finish one or two quilts, you're way ahead of me. <laughs> just, I just couldn't believe I got the quilt top done, but the quilting and the binding and all no. No. I was like, yeah, it's uh, what happened was because of this emergency call for quilt tops for charity, they came, they came and they cleaned me out, which I mean, other than the ones that were for gifts for my family or members or friends, they're, they're all gone. They're, they're all gone just so. And the only quilts that I did finish were the ones from the bubble block challenge, the bubble blocks where I sewed all that stuff onto mm. cotton quilter. And that was kind of a quilt as you go, right? I mean, so yeah, I didn't finish it. So, so technically, you have nothing left in your works in progress pile. So you know, so maybe you win because you did clear out that pile. You just didn't do them <laughs> yourself. <laughs> well, I guess you know it's like quilting by your, you know, quilting on your domestic, you know, quilting by check, and then quilting by charity. <laughs> charity donation yeah I guess that's the but yeah like I know but I mean I it's um my time management skills over the last little bit have been not great <laughs> so since our chat since we last chatted which was last year mm. yeah like that UFO challenge I think I did 
the only thing I, I completed was those quilts that those bubble quilts because they were basically quilt as you go quilts. So and they weren't in the UFO pile when we made our bet because I haven't finished anything out of that UFO pile. <laughs> well, I think I finished one maybe that was in my pile. I've made several quilts since then, but none of them out of my UFO pile. I keep making new quilts since then. <laughs> <laughs> Are, okay, so are we agreeing to challenge each other again for the UFOs, or are we just going, Brenda's got a lost cause, there ain't going to happen? <laughs> yeah, I think we just, we'll just pretend that that never happened. I think that's the best thing, and we just, we're, we're just making quilts. Yeah, we, we don't need to be challenged. Yeah, okay. <laughs> we're challenged enough, let's put it that way. I did have a friend, though, that said that, uh, you know, when you're making these charity quilts, I mean, you know, anything after that is bonus. And I'm like, well, yeah. But it's just, and she said, the rule is you only ever have to admit to 30 or whatever no. number you're comfortable with and that no longer mm -hmm. causes you stress. Yep. Right. So if a number over 30, like 45 UFOs cause you stress, you only have to admit to 30. Excellent. Because UFOs are different than timeouts. <laughs> Quilts can be on timeout. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what it is. My pile over there is on timeout. It just that's right. Yeah. Sit and think for a while. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, so we don't want to do another something as stressful as another UFO challenge. Oh my gosh. That is sad that you know, I actually thought about that all the time. Like, especially when it came to donating, I was like, okay, even if I get one or two quilts done out of that pile, you know, like yeah. Because I know you're busy, you're busy working, you're busy filming, you're busy traveling around New Zealand and taking videos and also doing videos on your quilting like I you know life is full right so even if I got yeah. like two done I figured okay I'd be ahead but no I never got anything done. <laughs> so I'm like yeah no it's not working <laughs> yes but you gave a lot of quilts to charity and that's all that matters that's, that's and that's probably where where they needed to go and they are being yeah. finished and bound mm -hmm. and everything else like it's funny now as the months go, have gone by since that happened every you see all these charity quilts now coming up and it's like mm. oh, yeah they do a lot of them yeah well i managed to give three i think yeah three quilts to charity last year so i'm feeling pretty good yeah but, yep considering I, I don't have the output you do I, I don't manage to make quite as many quilts but yeah but you know what I don't work I'm retired yeah. right so mm. my time is like all day is my time right so and people people too they they get stressed out when they see somebody mass producing quilts and they don't realize like if I get up at six o'clock in the morning which I don't but but if I did I could, you know, have my coffee, do my Facebook and all this stuff and be in here by 7 38 mm -hmm. and so all day and then be done. Yeah. Right. And then sit after supper and do hand sewing. Well, because I don't have a boss to account to and all the rest mm -hmm. of the stuff, right? And you know, and that makes a big difference. Well, I get up around nine. 30 9 30 10 somewhere in there you know it's kind of like I get up when I want to now and I you know spend my morning doing my Facebook and all the rest of the stuff you know the social media stuff I have to go and do then I come in here and it's like the next thing you know it's lunch and then you make you know lunch and you know and then you have the rest of the afternoon to pretty much do whatever you want right so yeah that yeah. this is makes a huge difference when you've got all those hours that you can do things in, right? So, yeah, I tell people, I said, my time management, and there's days I have a whole bunch of stuff to do, and I don't want to do any of it. So I just make blocks. I make yeah. blocks that make me happy. Yep. And it's yeah. fun. <laughs> you have to do that. I was like, I find that sometimes if I'm just not getting into the swing of sewing or something, I'll just like make crumb blocks and it just 
it makes me happy just sitting there quietly putting bits of fabric together and seeing what happens and no no plan no yes mind, just sewing yeah well my crumb baskets i don't know if you can see them i don't know maybe you can't see them okay they're over here oh, yeah they're yeah. over here like they're up here i they all started getting too full and i mean unmanageably full they wouldn't even stack anymore so what i did is i went to the store oops and i got these tiered boxes with a handle mm -hmm. and i got two of them right one to hold all my warm colors yep like both large and small hexy and the other one to hold all my cool tones right all, both smaller and as I pulled out stuff out of my crumb bin that was big enough to make a hexy, I was also looking for flowers. So I have a whole bunch of flowers I got to make at some point. But, you know, so I've got them in, you know, sets of six. So as I'm going through this, I'll make those flowers first. And then these will go into things like blocks that make into placemats or bedding or, you know, table runners or whatever just to move them out but meanwhile I've also pulled out all the little stuff that's too small for a hexi and mm -hmm. I'm throwing that in to crumb quilt blocks and it's amazing how fast you can go through because you know like things that were almost half full now are you know a very manageable okay these are your crumbs and my crumbs are like hand size that right. fit nicely in the basket so I don't have to iron them every time I take them out yeah and it's like yeah, just harvesting hexes has made such a big difference. And I like thread basting, so I've got lots of junk thread around. So, but yeah, that's what I mean. That, and if I'm doing hand quilting, which I will be on my nosegay quilt, quilt it gets heavy after a certain point. Mm -hmm. And then I have to put it down while I'm still looking for something to do with my hands, right? So I can do yeah. smaller things, later things, right? So. But yeah, that's how it, I'm, that's my big plan. <laughs> so what is your big plan for the next couple of months? Oh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I just, at this point, I would have, well, the next couple of months are going to be really, really busy. Anyway, I'm going to New York. <gasps> oh, wow. Very exciting. <laughs> um, It's for a work thing. I'm I'm going over to visit some universities in New York and around Washington DC area to do a presentation on some work <coughs> we're doing and um but I have to spend a week in New York which is really sad isn't it oh <laughs> yeah but it'll be fun yeah. but yeah I'm looking forward to that so I need recommendations on good fabric shops in New York so that I can buy some fabric and bring it home that's <laughs> they have um well Victoria Finley Wolf right I mean right off the top that's what you know she's the queen of New York uh, you know quilting and just beautiful fabric she's got mm. gorgeous fabric and I think she has a small shop in New York I'm not sure where it is but um anything in the garment district you have to be yeah. careful yeah. to look and phone first find out ahead mm. yeah you know, if they even have any cotton mm. the garment district has every fabric imaginable you know, yeah. if you're into sewing clothes, I mean, it's amazing what you can get there. But yeah, but be, you know, it, you can spend yes. a lot of time in there and not find anything. <laughs> for quilting. Yeah, my bed. Mind you, if you're doing wools, like wool and appliques and stuff like that, mm -hmm. you yeah, the garment district would be the place to go. Oh, because yeah. they would have small wood, woolen, you know scraps maybe you yeah. know, to, mm. to get you started so I don't mm. know what kind of thing you're you want to go into but yeah oh yeah you yeah. can have fun <laughs> you have to like take an extra suitcase just to <laughs> buy one buy one when you're there yeah. <laughs> buy one just buy one when you're there you know it's like if you don't find anything yeah I know it's kind of and fabric is heavy in a mm. suitcase Yes, I know. Yeah. I traveled on an airplane with um, uh, a little backpack, which had all mm -hmm. my clothes that I needed yep. to travel in, and a big, heavy suitcase full of fabric. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll have to control myself, I think. But well, they might... wait. 
they they lifted up the suitcase and they they had to weigh it because if they said over 80 pounds you have to pay and i go yeah i know it's 79 pounds yep yeah i'm like, pretty i used to travel with a lot of books when i was doing book crossing which is like leaving books around to for people to pick up and um we used to go to book crossing conventions and like normally the flight limit is about 23 kilos and i could just by eye like lift up my bag and say yeah that's 20 kilos because i got so used to like what a 20 kilos of books felt like yeah, Cause, yeah same thing you you fill your bag with books and then you take your backpack with your clothes in it <laughs> yeah it, it, my backpack kind of looked like an oversized purse so it was yeah, yeah they never questioned me about what was in there but it was like yeah, because I was going from our home here in Canada mm. to our small little home that we have in Tucson. So I had all, you know, in case there was, you know, in case you, ha you have to have an extra pair of pants, an extra shirt, an extra, you know, whatever. Yeah, it was, but this bag of fabric, it was just like, oh, Les was like, I can hardly lift it. What have you got in here? You know, like, oh, you're only going for, you know, you'll be there in less than eight hours. What could you possibly pack? that's this heavy but the lady's like oh you packed fabric oh my god yay yeah. <laughs> right so i'm not allowed to buy more than 23 kilos of fabric <laughs> no that's yeah because you got to check either that or start throwing out clothes <laughs> who needs clothes i'll just take the fabric <laughs> i'll just take the fabric it's all fine yeah we had a girlfriend there she uh she joined us in Tucson and I told her and she was she was there at a uh, a different like a it's like a dude ranch right and then mm. she would come visit with us and we would take her around to all the cool stores in the Tucson area the metropolitan area <laughs> she was like I can't get all of this stuff into my suitcase I said throw your clothes out <laughs> she was like really <laughs> I go yeah just throw them up hey you know, old shirt and all this all that throw it off don't worry about it and she laughed she thought it was so funny and she did she threw her clothes it's like yeah throw her. she threw her clothes out I thought now that's a quilter <laughs> that's a die hard anyway should we get to sewing and then we can come chat again at the end yep that sounds like a perfect plan okay so how did we do with our sewing day? <laughs> I got nothing done. <laughs> <laughs> I have been, I've sewed a mountain of uh, like blocks together, the strips of four to go along the sides of yeah. these uh, charity blocks, these potato chip blocks. And I have a hundred in this stack, but I don't think I have 200 in this stack. So I'm going to be doing more sewing, but I knew that was going to happen anyways. It's kind of one of those things that you, yeah, okay. You know, you got to just live with it and go with it. So, but yeah, yeah I had fun today. I'm so glad you decided. I'm so glad we decided we had time to do this because yeah. it gets, yeah. life gets crazy for me. And I'm less, my husband keeps telling me you're really overscheduled. And I'm like, well, maybe. I'm having hey, fun. My schedule. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm still having fun. So I don't consider it yeah. over schedule, but yeah, maybe a little over schedule. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this has been good. This has reminded me that I need to actually schedule time just to sit and sew and not be racing from one place to another all the time. That sometimes you just need to say, right, this is a sewing day. And so this has been really good. Yeah, and you, you know what, in future chat, it's so important for one's creativity to seize that time and say, this is my yeah. time, my time. I can't see that, but no, I would imagine it's beautiful. Ooh, we're going to get to travel. Ooh, are we going to, there, almost. There, oh, very cool. Yeah. Oh, that's going to be lovely when it's done. Yeah. <laughs> I have to edit in some proper pictures of us <laughs> yes edit in the proper pictures and then i i will go looking for it yes because yeah. that's uh yeah like we're like i was saying earlier we're filming this on the february 25 25th so it doesn't drop for a while but yeah. you'll be done and hopefully i'll be done 
<laughs> yeah, hopefully I can put some pictures at the end of this of the finished product and you better see it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. it's uh, It's been just such a blast with you today. I mean, and you put me back into like, okay, just go be creative. Go have fun. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah, yeah and that's, don't have to do anything. Thing. It's like, it doesn't matter if you go into things without a plan. You just start and see what happens. And, well, I've almost got a pillow top done. So I'm... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, sometimes those were where the best ideas come from is just, yeah. you know, pick it up, you know, pick up your pencil and paper and doodle and fabric and just start making it happen because yeah. that's where the joy is, right? Is to make something cool and new. And, you know, like I love my, I love going through my doodling books. My, like, I went to a, a uh, supply, office supply place. And I have a doodling book. And now as I'm going through my doodling books, once we film the idea that I think is good enough to film, because not all your ideas are great, no, you know, but by the time I you film this, I mean, and you pull it out and you move on to the next fun idea or you recreate that idea to make it better, right? So, I mean, yeah, yeah there's a lot of fun. You can just sit and play and and it's always wonderful to sit and giggle all afternoon. It's a great way to spend yeah. an afternoon. Absolutely fabulous. Yeah, it's been yeah. really, really good. Yeah, so our next so date here, too, is the first Saturday. If you have a chance to come, because I know it's Sunday for you, is yes. always going to be the first Saturday of the month, unless it's a staff holiday. And we put all the dates in the caption below with the Zoom coordinates, right? So... If you're interested, please come because I think it would be it's a it's always there's always it's always fun crowd. It's always a fun crowd of people that show up. And I'm always surprised it's kind of a revolving door. Mm -hmm. We never have 60 ladies or 60 people in at one time. But you know, we have like 20, and then all of a sudden it's like 30, and then we have 20, and then we have like and it's like it's a it's a revolving door so date. And I know once we get into the summer months, I'm going to go for nine from nine till nine because I fibromyalgia issues, you know, you can't work like that in the winter months, but I can do that in the summer months. Right. So I think, yeah, that might be easier for you too, but then you don't have to get up at the crack of stupid and show up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's a good thing. Cause like, yeah, I think your 9am is, is something like midnight for me. So yeah, I would be. <laughs> Yeah, it would be the crack of stupid o'clock in the morning on a Sunday morning for you to, to even come join. It's like, that's when most people are, you know, trying to get that, I get an extra hour of sleep or two, maybe. Yay, let's do this, right? Yeah. Yeah, hopefully I can get in for the last couple of hours when it's like reasonable time here in New Zealand. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and your coffee or tea is that a chance that, okay, I'm well caffeinated. I can run on yeah. a dangerous object. Yes. <laughs> I can run a sewing machine. I'm awake enough. Yes. Oh, I had a blast. So yeah, we're yeah, a really, really good day. <laughs> Being fun. Thank you. Yes, I do. We should make another date before Christmas if we can. Yes. Find you. Yeah. You're going to be busy doing some traveling, fun traveling. Yeah. Because yeah. you do traveling and videos of your travel. And what big trip are you taking? Well, big, big trip is the New York trip, which is coming up in April but probably the videos for it won't be till much later in the year because I'm still putting out videos from my big trip last year up to the North Island so yeah so if any of our viewers know any great great uh quilt shops to go see in New York please yes. put them in the comments below on either my channel or future cats channel we're going to be linked back and forth to each other but I mean, yeah. put those comments in there so we both can see them, you know, which ones you would recommend. Or if you've gone to New York and you've gone to some place where it just has amazing, you know, quilting fabric, let us know because we're asking for that assistance right now. And it might yeah, be our time to know where to go. Yeah. yeah. When I hear New York, I th first thing, the words of Victoria Finley Wolf, but I'm not sure if her quilt store is reopened or not. So I would love to someday I will go there. If they move all the people out of New York, then I go, and then <laughs> and I go, I buy, and I leave, and then they put all the people back. Yeah, I know. I'm not big, crowded city, no. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, it's good. I think it'll be the biggest city I've ever been to. I mean, I, I lived in London and I've been to places like Paris and Rome and I've been to Washington, D.C., but I've never been to New York. So this is going to be a big city. Yeah, this is, <laughs> like, yeah. I, I see pictures of people on the seat, the street on the sidewalk walking like at rush hour and I start feeling anxious immediately <laughs> and it's you know it's, it's that crowded moving crowd it's like yeah I don't know yeah uh, it'll be exciting <laughs> it'll be fun for you too so Please. anyways you take care until we see each other again and we'll stay in touch and we'll try and get another so date in before Christmas, yeah. we're, not, we're not challenging each other for UFOs because that that ship has sailed. Yep, no, <laughs> too hard. We're, we're just challenging each other to keep enjoying the process of quilting. Yes, that's an ex that's an excellent challenge to do. That yeah. one, that one rocks. Good for you. Yeah. Okay, guys, you take care until we see each other again. Bye. <laughs> My husband and I would love to thank you for coming along with us on our quilting journey and the YouTube adventure that we're on. We have some wonderful plans for 2023 and it includes a lot more like with the Facebook group and the rooms feature and sewing and hanging out with people. Those monthly Zoom sew dates are still in the works. We have a lot of fun ideas coming up for 2023 and we hope you share, like, and subscribe with your friends. That little notification bu button and subscribing to us really helps us out. Commenting helps us out too. So if you like what you're seeing, let us know. Even send us a like a, a heart on the comment. That, that helps so much for us. Okay, you have an absolutely fabulous 2023 and all of our best wishes for you in the future. Okay, take care. Bye.